Take it away, Shasky. Uh, CJ, um, thanks for calling back in. Uh, when you were talking with, with Jonathan, you know, it's very difficult. When you see things in print, there's no context, there's no tone. So your perception of the context and tone regarding attitude, um, was there a sense of entitlement? Was it more frustration? Was it optimism? Was it, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do my part? Like, kind of give us some of the backstory on how it landed on your lap when you were talking with him. Yeah, I didn't really get a sense of entitlement at all. Um, really, it was just, you know, two men talking about, you know, really what's going on. I don't know how to frame it, um, but I didn't get a sense of entitlement from Jonathan at all. I think he was just keeping it real. Um, you know, if you know, right. imagine if you were, you know, excelling at your job for, you know, most of the year, and then, you know, all of a sudden you were demoted. I think that would, you know, I think that would kind of mess with anyone. Um, and I guess the point I was making before my line was too scratchy, apparently, gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry. But, um... <laughs> yeah, Auburn paid for that Wi-Fi, man. You know, they say Alabama, <laughs> the Crimson Tide has better Wi-Fi in Tuscaloosa <laughs> than they do in Auburn. I'm just saying. That's a bad but joke. Yeah, I, I didn't get a sense of entitlement from J.K. Um, you, know, while we were, you know, some of those quotes in there while they were being delivered, he had a smile on his face, kind of had his leg up like Cap Captain Morgan up on his locker, <laughs> talking with confidence. And that's the thing. I think, you know, the main thing he was sharing with me is like, yeah, I'm not happy with my situation, but, you know, I'm confident. I believe in myself. And, right. and one, of the, one of the biggest things he shared with me is, you know, eventually he's like, eventually I will get my way. And when mm -hmm. I get my way, good things happen. But, you know, until that time comes, he said, I'm just going to keep to myself. He said, I'm going to I'm going to focus on what I have to do to get on the court. And if I do those things, then eventually I'll get my way. No <laughs> doubt. CJ Holmes, SF Chronicle here. Let me jump in here real quick, Shasky. I am. I just want to say about Kaminga's situation, not playing much of these playoffs, I'm surprised. With the way he ended the season, I was like, boy, this guy's going to be part of the rotation. He could do things that no other players can do on this team outside of Jordan Poole, which is get to the free throw line consistently. He could bang at the rim. He could guard one through four, maybe sometimes one through five. I'm a little surprised he hasn't gotten the playoff minutes and he's gotten the quick hook. What about you, CJ? Yeah, it's a shock. And, you know, you know, he played very well um, in absence of uh, Andrew Wiggins down the stretch of the regular season. And, you know, when I think of if a guy's playoff ready, I think back to moments. And, you know, although the Warriors are playing against the B team, <laughs> Portland's B team during that final regular season uh, road game, um, or among the final regular season road games. Uh, I think back to that dunk where Jonathan caught it on the wing, drove baseline, you know, threw it back. Steph Curry mm. had to take a lap out, out the half court. Lester Kionis had his hands over his head. Uh, I think that was the moment that showed me that this kid is this, this kid's locked in and he, you know, he's ready for playoff minutes. But I think the biggest thing that's kept uh, J.K. off the court this postseason is, one, the return of Wiggins. And two, the presence of Gary Payton II, um, because of spacing, other factors, you know, it's hard to prioritize events for those three together. And I think right now, um, really to no fault of his own, J.K. found himself as the odd man out in the rotation. Yeah, I would agree there. But you also referenced that there are things that he needs to do to get onto the court. Does he know what those things are? Um, I, I would think so, right? Because, you know, you, you got to, you know, Kurt, Kurt has to be in his ear. I don't think there's a situation where, you know, he's completely blindsided about what's going on. But if you look at his, you know, numbers from the first series, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, a deeper level of lock-in than he could reach on the defensive end. Um, mm. More is desired from him from a rebounding perspective. Um, I think he only had single-digit rebounds for the entire series. And there were, there were some games where he did get good minutes, but, you know, some might say it wasn't a stretch long enough for him really to get a rhythm out there. But, you know, that, 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 that motor, rebounding, um, you know, playing with intensity, um, those might be some things that head coach Steve Kerr is looking to get out of him. And, you know, right now Jonathan just has to be patient until he can get back on the court and prove that he's got the message. No doubt. Are you surprised, because uh, we've been talking about it all morning, are you surprised at how it was perceived online and kind of how we've been talking about it today? Are, are, you, are you surprised by the reaction from fans? I, yeah, um, in a way, uh, a little surprised. But then again, it's it's been the question on a lot of people's minds gotcha. uh, all playoffs long. You know, as we've talked about, this is a kid with you know supreme athleticism. This is a kid who made great strides on offense and defense in his second year of the NBA. And entering this postseason, I think everyone thought 
that, you know, I think I think the, one of the main thoughts was if, you know, with Johnny Kaminga's contributions, you know, off the bench and development that he's made, then the Warriors are in a good position uh, to make a run. You know, I couldn't really think of a playoff rotation without John McGimmick in it um, entering the playoff. But for one, for one reason or another, it, it hasn't played out that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, while I'm kind of surprised by, you know, how the story blew up, at the same time, it's been on everyone's mind. No doubt about that. We talked about it yesterday, and Shasky was like, man, I don't know why we're wasting time on it. And then, boom, you come out with the article, and that's all <laughs> we're talking about here because uh, he is a factor. All right, game two adjustments. We're talking to C.J. Holmes, uh, the SF Chronicle Warriors. Obviously, you have to win this game. I found a stat agree stat yesterday on SportsCenter where if LeBron James, his teams win game one. They've won 19 straight series, and obviously this is a must win for the Warriors going going down 0-2 and losing both games at home. That would be problematic for them heading to L.A. Saturday. So what adjustments do you think the Warriors will make in this game? Will they go smaller? Will they pull Looney off the floor? Will they try to play faster? What do you see happening here in game two? You know, I do think they found something um, over that final six minutes or so going small. You know, Curry, Jordan, uh, Clay, Wiggins, and that Draymond Green is a small ball five. I think I don't think they'll start the game that way. Right. Um, simply because they're already undersized as it is. And um, they need to, you know, try to establish themselves, you know, early on the glass and be physical with Davis early. But I do think that we will see more of that small ball lineup and they'll try to outrun, outgun the Lakers. Um, but really, it's just they, they, they need to attack more. Um, they played well enough to win game one, right? Um, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, they shot a lot of threes, right? But they made it at a 40% clip, right? Yep. It's like they shot 50, 54 threes and only made 20% of them. They, they made enough to win the game. I think where the difference was, the biggest difference was the, the disparity at the free throw line. The disparity yep. at the free throw line, right? And the Warriors need to do more to try to even that out. And, you know, all Hoopers know, if you want to get to the line, you got you to gotta, you gotta drive into the trenches. Mm. I think we're going to see more of that from the Warriors in Game 2, um, attacking with intention. Matchup that you're going to be hyper-focused on that might be a microcosm to who's winning this game. Ah. <sighs> Anthony Davis versus whoever's trying to slow him down. I mean, the guy had 30 and 20 in game one. Um, you limit some of that and you're in, in great shape. Um, it's going to be a lot of what we saw in game one, a lot of Looney, a lot of Green. Um, those guys alternating in. Maybe we'll even get some Kaminga in, uh, on Davis in, 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 game, uh, in game two and just see how that plays out. But the bottom line is Anthony Davis is a problem that needs to be solved. Um, so him versus whoever is the only matchup I'm going to pay attention to. Yeah, points in the paint, 54-28. to 28. You talked about the free throw discrepancy here. And then Schroeder and Russell, I think, you know, they shocked everybody. They combined for 38 points mm. and nine assists. So before we get out of here, who do you see? I think Andrew Wiggins can take D'Lo down on that block and attack him at will and maybe play him off the floor. But I'll, Schroeder is a problem, though, when he picks up full court. He's a tough little player there. So that's another matchup I'm going to be watching, CJ. What other matchup would you watch? Some of the role players here. Talk about that. <sighs> mm. You know, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. I mean, yeah, Schroeder got an absurd amount of free throws last game, and I think that's something that the Warriors are going to adjust on, like, immediately. I don't think this guy's going to be shooting eight, nine free throws like he did in game one. Um, but, again, like, I'm just going to be real with y'all. I don't think the role players matter as much as what AD is doing yeah. like, inside on that block. You yeah. can get, like, 30 and 20. You mm-hmm. cut into that a little bit. They're going to win the game. Yeah. No, you're right, man. It's about the dudes, and Anthony Davis is the biggest dude of them all, and he dominated game number one, man. Uh, random question. Uh, because it's the Lakers, are you seeing more celebrities pregame kind of hanging around on the floor? You know, is, is Bonte there with uh, no, Rob I'm Lowe, for example? <laughs> no, I'm not seeing any of that. And um, yeah, I mean, was that Jessica Alba? Was she at our game, or was she at the She was uh, at one of the games? Game? Jessica Alba? Know, but mm. Rob Lowe's in the building. Um, maybe there'll be more stars out in game two, but I don't think it's going to be anything like what we'll see in L.A. Yeah. Um, on a Friday and a Monday, respectfully, no disrespect to the, um, <laughs> the Six Center Death Star. Uh, <laughs> only celebrity that matters to Warriors Wait, fans is E40. It, so, yeah. CJ, did you just say Death Star? Are you a Star Wars guy like myself? Oh, uh, for sure. Absolutely. Oh, no. Well, no, CJ plays all the video games. May the force be with you. May the fourth be with you. CJ, I...
I'm not even going to go there. They're getting on me. From I promise, one Jedi to another. After the season, I'll watch some Star Wars because the guy's driving me crazy. We got game two and he wants to talk Star Wars analogy. So I know CJ's about that Marvel life. He's about all those comic books and stuff like that. No surprise there. CJ, see you later tonight, hey, good man. Stuff, good stuff, CJ. buddy. Good story. Hey, yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Anytime, CJ Holmes. Follow him on Twitter at CJ Holmes. And I like of him. Of course, uh, no, he's a really good dude. Really good dude.